Welcome to our lecture online. Einstein was very strongly opinionated on what he believed was the necessity of space being some sort of ether, some sort of material, something with qualities, with properties that allowed electromagnetic radiation to flow through it. And so we can kind of make an analogy between what happens with waves on a string versus with electromagnetic radiation in space. Here we have a string that's tied between two strong posts that are steady and holding in place. And we realize that the velocity of a wave traveling across that string depends upon the square root of the tension in the string divided by the mass per unit length. If we increase the tension, the speed of the wave will increase. If we decrease the tension, the speed of the wave will decrease. Now, if we have a situation where the tension is set, and therefore the velocity of the wave is set, and then we pluck on the string, in other words, what we're doing here is we're adding potential energy by stretching the spring. There's tension on the spring, the spring wants to snap back into position. And so when we let go, the string will snap back into position, but it will overshoot its equilibrium point, and so the energy that was put into the string, the potential energy then converts to kinetic energy, back to potential energy, back to kinetic, and so forth, and it causes a wave of a specific wavelength and a specific frequency. We know that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, so when the wavelength is smaller, the frequency is higher, and when the wavelength is, is larger, then the frequency is smaller. Yes? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. I made a mistake. That is very good. Thank you. All right. So we see that even though the velocity doesn't change, it will allow for a higher frequency or a lower frequency, depending upon where we input the energy to the string and therefore to the wave. So you can see that when you pluck it at the halfway point, you get a different kind of waveform with a longer wavelength. And if you pluck it a quarter of the distance from one end to the other, then you get a different kind of what we call uh, a standard or a, a stationary waveform like that. Now, let's go to space and ENM waves. Notice we can have ENM waves of all different kinds of wavelengths and frequencies, but the velocity is the same for every electromagnetic wave in space. It's a speed of light, and it's a constant, and it doesn't matter what the source of the light is or what the, the speed of the observer is, it always appears to us as moving at the speed of light. So it's determined by some sort of property, like in the string we have the tension and the mass per unit length, in the space we have some sort of property of space that allows light to travel through it. Now it turns out that Maxwell came up with the brilliant equation where he said that the velocity is equal to 1 over the square root of what we call the, the, what we call the permittivity of free space and the permeability of free space. Now the permittivity has something to do with electric field in space and the, perme the permeability has something to do with the magnetism of free space. Here are the values of these two constants, and so indeed, if you plug that into your calculator and you work it out, you indeed do get 3 times 10 to the 8, the speed of light. So Maxwell was brilliant in figuring out that relationship. Now, we can define the permittivity of free space by a measure of the ability of an electric field to permeate the vacuum of space. Now, of course, the vacuum of space, we call it a vacuum because it will be devoid of elements of, of molecules, of atoms. But it doesn't mean that space is nothing. Space still has properties. And so the ability of the electric field to permeate that space, whatever that space is, is controlled by this property, which we named or call permittivity of free space. And so here's the value of that. Then mu sub naught, the permeability of free space, and this is the value of the permeability of free space, is a measure of the resistance of a material against the formation of a magnetic field. So when a magnetic field builds up, and it builds up in space, well, space has some sort of property that has a certain amount of resistance to the buildup of that, of that uh, magnetic field. 
And so when you have electromagnetic radiation going through space, we have at the same time oscillations of the electric field and oscillations of the magnetic field, and they're always perpendicular to each other. As they move through space, the speed is controlled by some sort of property of space, just like they're controlled by the properties of a string, the sound waves, or the, the, not the sound waves, but the waves on a string. Of course, they could produce a sound. And at the same time, we know that you can have different frequencies and wavelengths just like you can have different frequencies and wavelengths on a string. And where there must be some sort of similarity, notice that waves are energy going from point A to point B. Just like they are on a string, it's energy going from point A to point B. Energy goes along the string by an alternate exchange from potential to kinetic back to potential energy. And we would probably expect some similar kind of existence for waves in space that there's this changing of potential to, to kinetic back to potential back to kinetic energy in a way. We know that an electromagnetic wave has some energy per unit volume and that energy then moves through space and it gets moved through space through potentially an interaction between the wave and space itself, just like there's an interaction between the energy inside the medium. So it's actually the medium of space, the fabric of space, that allows that electromagnetic radiation to travel through at a particular speed. So is it exactly the same? Of course it's not, but there's a, a lot of similarity. Again, this is what Einstein said. If space wasn't something, it wasn't a fabric, you couldn't have waves traveling through space because waves require some sort of medium with some sort of properties to allow that motion of electromagnetic radiation. So that's probably a certainty. What exactly it is, we're still on the look for it. We'll figure it out perhaps one day, but at this point we need to start seeing the analogies between known systems and unknown systems to try and figure out what it might be. And of course, we also have to look at some of the other great discoveries that we'll talk about it in our next video. So stay tuned and we'll on the hunt to try to figure out what space actually is. So if those two waves, if those waves between the two blocks were in nothing, it wouldn't do that? Well, if you didn't have a string, then you couldn't have a wave. That's the idea, right? The string is the medium. Without the string, you don't have a wave. Without space, you don't have a wave. What is space? Space is kind of like a three-dimensional spring, so to speak. <laughs> so is a string, not the medium the string is in? So no, the wave travels only in the string. The string is the medium, space is the medium. So that's where the analogy is. Of course, it's, it's a tough analogy. You have a one-dimensional string compared to three-dimensional space, but again, the, the idea would be about the same. So we'll figure it out, hopefully. We'll keep looking.